Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at some of the guns coming up for sale in their February of 2017 regional auction. And they have this particularly pretty cool one here. This is a Hadar II, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and it is a, a civilianized 308 version of the Galil assault rifle. And these were only brought into the country uh, very briefly. You don't really see many of them around. And it's an interesting gun to take a look at, especially in context with the, the US import and assault weapons bans that are the, really the reason that it looks like it does instead of looking like a proper Galil. So a little bit of background here. The Galil was for uh, quite some time the standard Israeli army rifle. They decided in 1967 that they wanted a rifle in 5.56 NATO and they wanted it to be domestically produced because after the 1967 war, they realized there's a substantial possibility if something like that happened again, they might face arms embargo from the rest of the world or parts of the rest of the world and they wanted to be able to supply their own military hardware internally wherever possible. So they did a bunch of trials, they did a bunch of testing and the rifle they ended up adopting is basically an AK. Now the way this actually developed was of course the Russians developed the AK and then the Finns took the AK and modified it a bit and adopted it themselves as the RK-62 in 1962, uh, commonly known as the Valmet. And what the Finns did was improve, basically they improved the manufacturing quality of the AK. Um, later on they would also improve the sights, but they, they produced what's commonly considered to be the best quality AK ever made. And uh, Yisrael Gal, who developed the Galil, based his rifle on a Valmet. In fact, the early prototype Galils are literally Valmet receivers. And the Israelis made a few other changes, more substantive changes than the Finns had made to the AK. And so the Galil that the Israelis ended up with has some things like receiver uh, or rear dust cover mounted sights that give you a much longer sight, sight picture, uh, aperture sights instead of notch sights. They actually have an ambidextrous safety, which is pretty cool. Um, the, the AK safety is actually better for left-handers than right, and so the Israelis added a, a thumb safety lever uh, for right-handers to use easily. But then this rifle was adopted in 5.56 instead of you know, any of the other calibers that AKs are available in. Now, 1973, the Galil's finally actually adopted by the, 19, by the time war happens in 1973, there are only a handful of them available, but after the war, they're developed and issued and, or produced and issued and, and in fairly large numbers. Now in 1983, the Israelis actually do further adopt a 308 version or 762 NATO version of the Galil, the Galatz Sniper. It's a semi-auto only version uh, in 762 NATO and the idea is they want something they better custom tailored to being a, a marksman's rifle. So scoped, heavier caliber, those sorts of things. And it's that rifle that this Hadar II is based on. Now, apparently these were made for importation into Germany. It's a little vague and it sounds like German laws changed at the last minute and prevented these from being imported into Germany. So they instead turned around and sent them to the United States instead. Um, they were only imported into the US in 1989 and not a very large number of them, although I don't have a specific number for you. And they are basically a 308 Galatz sniper rifle that's been modified to make it more civilian. So let's take a closer look at some of the changes that were made specifically. So the stock of this rifle is obviously substantially different. They have gone for the so-called thumbhole style and this was done to avoid technically having a pistol grip because the pistol grip is solidly and completely connected to the rear of the buttstock. So under US legal definitions, this counts as a traditional style stock and not a pistol grip, which was one of the features which was legally restricted in some ways. So it does actually work left-handed and right-handed. Some thumbhole stocks are not really ambidextrous friendly. Um, they've also interestingly added a little ejection uh, buffer sort of thing here to prevent your brass from chewing up the wood. That's a nice little feature. Um, as opposed to the other 308 Galils on the market, which did come in later, this has the Galatz style of bolt handle, which doesn't protrude straight up. Uh, most Galils have a, a vertical bolt handle so that you can reach over the top and charge the gun like this. 
This one was lower because of course it was designed to have a scope mounted on top of it. Now the front sight and gas block unit here is one of the pieces that does differ between the military rifles and these civilianized ones. That has actually a really remarkably tall front sight. We'll take a look at the sight, fo the sight picture here and you can see it actually looks kind of goofy, really, it's, it's a bit odd. Um, but of course that's a bit different than the military. The rear sight is also somewhat different than the military one, um, along with the dust cover, so, or top cover. Now these rifles, the civilian, the Hadar IIs, actually had two different types of top cover that could be had. Um, they had this one with the iron sights mounted to it, and then they also had a version that had a pair of uh, weaver style of attachment points for a scope. So you'll find both of those out there. Um, I'm not actually sure which one was considered standard and which one was an optional accessory, but they are both out there now. Now the rest of the rifle is actually pretty much standard Galil. Um, the magazines are the same. This is a four round magazine which came with the Hadar II. Uh, often people will say it's five, it's actually just four. Um, now you could have four here plus one in the chamber, but four round magazine which is interchangeable with all the standard uh, full size Galil mags. Uh, they did also make uh, rarely a 10 rounder for these and the standard magazines are 25 rounds for the 308 caliber Galil and those all fit. The trigger group's the same, the magazine catches are the same, the receiver's actually the same. Interestingly, the safety is the same. There's this slot cut in the side of the stock and if you look down in there, you can see a typical AK style dust cover slash safety, which I can lift up using the, uh, the thumb connector on the right. They did, it appears they did cut the thumb tab off of this safety, so it's not, it's mechanically the same, but it's a slightly modified part so that they can fit it nice and smoothly under the stock. Now that safety I mentioned is right here on the side of the receiver. This is a standard thing that was done on the military Galil rifles as well. And if you are right handed, that falls nicely under the thumb. We can push that forward to render the gun hot and ready to fire. A little stiff, but there it is. You now have that little red button indicating that it's hot and you can see the safety has disappeared. When we pull that back, safety's engaged. That acts as a dust cover and it prevents you from pulling the bolt far enough back to chamber around. Couple of markings here on some on the receiver and some on the dust cover. So this is the dust cover, Hadar II, uh, semi-automatic caliber 762 by 51 NATO. And that is from Israeli Military Industries or Israel Military Industries, Israel. Moving forward, we have basically the same markings. Uh, these are actually on the receiver of the gun. So these are legally speaking the markings. Uh, serial number there, I have no doubt they started probably at 100,001 or maybe 100,100, something like that. So this is only a couple of hundred rifles into the production run. And we've got our model name and caliber there as well. So of course a lot of people like these rifles as they are because as thumb hole stocked import ban compliant guns go, it's not a bad one. The sights are nice, the trigger's not bad, the handling is decent. Um, but the people who aren't happy with them in this configuration, what they tend to do is convert them or try to convert them back into Galat's pattern sniper rifles. Uh, and the, the, the fundamental core mechanics of the gun make that possible. So it's a matter of replacing a couple of parts and the stock and it's not that difficult of a thing to do. Um, you do have to consider 922R which is US import versus domestic parts count and we won't get into that. But this is an interesting rifle for someone who wants to put together a Galatz clone because the Galatz itself is not available in the United States at all. So if you're interested in this one, whether to convert or just to have as it is, it's certainly a cool relic of that 1989, early 90s era of uh, import ban type rifles. Well, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to Rock Island's catalog page on this rifle. And you can take a look at their, their price estimate and their pictures and description and place a bid right there online if you're interested in it. Thanks for watching.